Hello, this is Jane Garland, and welcome to Journalism 101 Week in Review. As we take a look at the week, Ireland seeks a bailout after trying to halt or slow down the financial crisis themselves failed. Ireland's resistance furthered the strain for Spain and Portugal, both facing financial problems and bailouts of their own. France, Germany, and other EU leading economic powerhouses criticized the unfair rates forced upon them because of the bailouts of Greece and Ireland, and potentially Portugal and Spain. In Saudi Arabia, almost three million Muslims traveled up Mount Arafat on Monday for the annual pilgrimage of Hajj. The climb up is a cornerstone of the pilgrimage that is required for every able bodied Muslim at least once in their life. According to Islamic beliefs, this is the site of the Prophet Muhammad's farewell sermon and the day heaven's doors open to answer prayers and grant forgiveness. And in the U.S., the U.S. Senate is expected to vote in the next few weeks on repealing the Don't Ask, Don't Tell policy in the U.S. military. The House has already passed the repeal, and President Obama supports it under a process that Joint Chiefs of Staff Chairman Admir Admiral Mike Mullen and Defense Secretary Robert Gates have come up with. This process examines the impact the decision would have on the military. Also, the, uh, the Obama administration has stated their sympathies with the criticism of heightened airport security for the Thanksgiving season, but stands by their decisions. Obama said such measures are the only ones right now that they consider to be effective against the kind of threat that we saw in the Christmas Day bombing of last year. And in Kentucky, Mine Safety and Health Administration shut down the Left Fork Mining Company's Straight Creek No. 1 in Bell County on Friday. The MSHA chief, Joseph Maine, said, Once MSHA completes a thorough auditing, there may be more mines put on notice. The coal mine had already been closed 92 times for safety violations this year. UK healthcare employee at Good Samaritan Hospital has a confirmed diagnosis of tuberculosis. The hospital is contacting, is contacting various individuals who may have had contact with the nurse for screening and testing of TB. In local news, a family court judge, Tamara Cormley, received reprimands and a suspension a year ago. A notice by Kentucky's Judicial Conduct Commission accused Gormley of judicial misconduct. Gormley has a hearing again for January 12th in Fayette County Circuit Court. At UK, the University of Kentucky uses Greenwood, Asher, and Associates Incorporated to search for their new university president. It is the same, it is the same firm that the university used when they searched for current president Lee Todd. Todd retires at the end of the academic year. Officials say that the smoking ban on the University of Kentucky campus has been successful, despite the cigarettes and smoking that are still present on the campus. Health Educator Coordinator or Health Education Coordinator Fadia Lowe says over 120 students, faculty, and staff have enrolled in the cessation programs. Also, UK pays for the nicotine replacement therapy, such as patches, gum, and lozenges. This weekend, 3,700 theaters screened Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1, beginning at midnight on Friday. The franchise celebrates their best opening yet with the new film grossing $125.1 million this weekend alone. The film had the fifth best opening day and the sixth largest opening of all time. And also, shoppers this year do not have to fight the usual Black Friday sales. Many stores will begin deals online Thanksgiving Day. Retailers are pleased because they will not have to open stores but can still benefit from the shopping. Consumers benefit by staying in the comfort of their own homes and not fighting for specific toys, games, and DVDs. Both sides see the benefit as the holidays approach it. Well, that's all the time we have, but please join us next week. Until then, I'm Jane Garland, and have a safe week.